One of the habits of a good craftsman is a willingness to deal with uncertainties. You take your skills, the range of skills you've developed, and you're willing to apply them to new situations, new problems. You experiment, and you deal with failure, and you try again. Until you can see how the basic principles of your skill can be extended. in that particular set of circumstances, that particular set of problems. The same principle applies to the meditation. You find, as you're dealing with the breath energy in the body, there are parts of the body that you have trouble integrating into your range of healthy breath energy. So you have to learn how to think about them in new ways if you try to push them out of you or ignore them. They don't go away. To try to learn to think about them in new ways. For example, if there's tension in your neck or your shoulders, think of the neck and shoulders actually doing the breathing. The breath energy goes into them. Oftentimes, if it's an area of the body that's been starved of breath energy, you'll find that you have to start out with lots of deep, long in-breaths, shallow out-breaths. Be careful not to squeeze them on the out-breath. They do the breathing. The breath energy goes in there, and they're the ones who breathe in, breathe out. You can think of the breath energy coming in and out of the brain. The brain is doing the breathing. The spinal cord is doing the breathing. And see what that does to the breath energy. It helps to open things up or to strengthen parts of the body that are weak. If it doesn't work, try to experiment and see what does work. As a meditator, you always want to be expanding your range of skills. Consolidate what you've learned and then see how it can grow. In doing so, you find that you expand your sense of who you are, what's possible. that sense of who you are. Don't focus primarily on that. We have ways of typecasting ourselves. You fall here or there on the Enneagram, or you're a smart person, or you're a sensitive person, or whatever. And if you think in those terms, you tend to limit yourself. What those types are are the Areas you tend to fall back on, the range of skills you're already comfortable with. But you don't want to be limited to those skills. You have to be willing to deal with uncertainties. There are certain roles that you're comfortable filling, but you don't want to be limited to those roles. There are certain ways of building your self-esteem. We can see that you do something well, you can pat yourself on the back, you handle that situation well from that angle. But maybe you handled it poorly when looking at it from another angle. That's an area you don't like to look at because it doesn't feed your self-esteem, and that way you stay blind. used to certain patterns in your emotional life, like patterns in the weather. They seem natural because they're the ones you're used to. When I 
was younger, I lived back east, like everywhere east of the Rocky Mountains during the summer. The heat would build and build and build, and then there would be a huge thunderstorm and everything would be dispersed and cool down. And he got used to thinking, well, that's the way it has to be. The heat and the humidity build, and then the thunderstorm breaks everything. Now you live here in California, and the summer's not like that at all. When the cool air comes in, it comes in stealthily. Very quietly. You go through a heat wave, and the next morning you wake up and there's fog. And there's no clear line that told you, okay, now the heat's going to break. It's a different pattern. And we need to realize in our lives that sometimes the patterns we go through, the ones that we're used to, are unhealthy. Or they may be useful in some circumstances and not in others. And so it's good to realize there are other ways of dealing with these patterns. So instead of trying to think of what kind of person you are or where you fit on a particular scale, just look at your range of skills and ask if you can expand that range. Look at things from different perspectives. For instance, if you're used to thinking of yourself as smart, it's useful to live in a set of circumstances where other people don't think that you're smart. First, you may find it debilitating, because your self-esteem has been built up around the idea that you're smart. But the idea that you're smart can get in the way of learning new things. So you have to get past that sense of being debilitated and realize, well, maybe you are dumb in certain areas. The way to get around that is to be willing to learn. That way you have a wider range of places where you can stay, a wider range of groups you can live with, and a wider range of ways that you look at yourself, look at the situation you're in. The wider your range of skills, the easier it is to survive. So your survival doesn't have to depend on other people recognizing the fact that you're smart, or even you're thinking that you're smart. Or if you're used to being angry, going through a certain pattern like the summer weather pattern. The anger gradually builds, gradually builds, and then there's a storm and it clears the air. And you're used to that effect, the idea that really feeling the anger is going to clear the air. But what happens, of course, is you end up doing and saying things that are harmful to yourself, harmful to the people around you. So you've got to ask yourself, what are the ways are there of dealing with this situation? And you have to ask yourself, do you really need to clear the air with anger? Does it clear the air? Might it not be better to go back to the very beginning stages of the anger and watch those to see how you can nip it in the bud? So the anger can be diffused in a subtle way, like the fog stealing in. These skills we learn as we meditate, watching thought patterns arise and learning how to nip them in a bud. That's an important part of the meditation. We like to think that the real meditation is when there are no distractions and you settle down with the breath and the mind doesn't wander off anywhere. But it's actually learning how to deal with distraction. That's one of the major skills in the meditation, seeing how it begins. Now there's this little stirring in the mind, and then depending on you want, you can place a meaning on that stirring. You get attracted to it, it becomes a little movie you want to follow, and then you're off someplace else. Or you want to see those processes as they just begin, and figure out ways of nipping them in the bud, questioning you know, the perception. 
dispersing that little stirring of energy with the breath, getting more alert to the fact that these things are happening, and more mindful of what you really want to be doing with them. And then you take the skill and you use it in daily life. And you run up against a lot of interesting ideas about yourself and your relationship to the people around you. There's that old book, Games People Play. You have to ask yourself, what are the games that you like to play, the games that you feel comfortable playing, you feel that you can play them well? And ask yourself how to pull out of those games. It's an important range of skills. And learn which areas of the Dharma to apply to which part of this emotional wave that you go through. In the beginning le levels where it's subtle, that's when you can apply the Four Noble Truths. And look for the stress. Look for the craving and the clinging. Because if you let things develop until you find you're in the middle of a rage, that subtle type of analysis is not going to work. As I said this afternoon, that's the time when you have to use your defilement to undercut your defilement. There's a great passage in the suttas where the Buddha says, when you're angry, you have to stop and think. And as you're angry, you tend to say things and do things that are self-destructive, that destroy your friendships. When you're angry, you don't look good. All of these are things that will please your enemy. Do you want to please that bastard? This way you use your pride and your hatred to undercut your anger. Because when things have developed to a full-blown level like that, the subtle teachings aren't going to help. But then you should ask yourself, well, what happened to all the skills you learned as a meditator? They're not just for sitting on the meditation seat. They're for use in your daily life, to take you out of the games you've been playing, to give you a wider range of skills. Ask yourself, what in your daily life tends to provoke the anger? Watching TV? Well, maybe you should watch less TV. There's that principle called restraint of the senses. You look at certain things that provoke anger, and many times it's not that the things provoke your anger, you're out looking for anger, because you want the storm. And you have to ask yourself, do I really want that storm? So look, learn how to look at the people you dislike in a different way. Learn to think about the situations that will provoke anger in a different way. And if you find that you can't look at the news without getting angry, you can't look. It means you can't look at the news yet. You're not ready for it. If you want to get involved in social action, then learn how to look at the news in a way that gives you ideas for what could be done, but without the anger. I mean, it's possible to recognize injustice and to desire a change without getting stirred to anger. When you can do that, you can work more effectively. This applies in day-to-day -day life as well, in your relationships with the people right around you. They may do things you dislike, and instead of letting yourself get upset, ask yourself, what would be the most effective way of stopping that? And it's rarely the route of anger. There are more subtle ways, more indirect ways. But they're not going to occur to you if you're boiling up with the anger. And then you find yourself confronted with the fact that you actually use the injustice or the, the wrong situation to play a game of anger. So you can start questioning your, your motives. Is it really the injustice you're caring about, or is it the, the joy or the, the charge of the anger? 
this way trying to bring the practice, the range of practice you developed in meditation to your daily life. You start seeing things about yourself that you didn't like. But hopefully you should be in a position where you're ready to face those things and deal with them. This is why the Buddha, when he gave instructions to Rahula for breath meditation, started him out with recollection of that fact that if you focus on inconstancy, it helps to deconstruct the sense that I am, the conceit that I am. Now, ordinarily, we think of conceit as one of the last things you abandon. It's a fetter that only arahants can abandon. But you want to learn how to question it right from the very beginning. because it often gets in the way of the skills that you could be developing as a meditator, or the way you apply those skills in new situations in life. When you can let go of that conceit, even though you can't totally conquer it, at least put it out of your mind for the time being and look more in terms of the range of skills you've got. And you want to expand that range of skills. And John Lee talks about knowing when to play the role of being a smart person and knowing when to play the role of being a dumb person. Or that whole question of the strength and power you show as an individual. Some people don't like to appear weak. Well, there are times when it's useful to play the weak role. You want to be able to play both the weak role and the strong role. Last week I was talking to a woman who was dealing with a difficult situation at work, and she began to realize that it just wasn't worth keeping up the fight, that she'd be better off quitting the job. But part of her didn't like the idea that she was going to look like a loser. She liked to think of herself as a warrior. What's well, a very incomplete understanding of what it means to be a warrior. A good warrior knows which battles are worth fighting and which ones are not. And it's when you're really confident in yourself as a warrior that you're willing to look weak or look demure. When you know it's to your advantage to do so. In other words, you're willing to play lots of different roles. learn how to expand your skill in all the different games you could be playing with other people, so you're not stuck in the same old narrow range of games, narrow range of skills. You're able to take on different identities as they're appropriate for the occasion. It's a principle that applies in the outside area of your daily life, and also in the inside area of your meditation. Learn how to live with uncertainties. With the confidence that you can, you can learn from them and expand your skills. It's an important step toward freedom. This ability to expand your range. If you need a working hypothesis about who you are, what kind of person you are, make it the kind of person always willing to learn. Just make sure that your attitudes really do carry that out. <laughs>